welcome back guys hope everybody's doing well today is a review of the Niwa Steadicam Glidecam uh, whatever you want to call it I literally searched DSR Steadicam on Amazon this was the cheapest best, best option that I could find with the best reviews so I thought right let's get that and give it a try I've honestly only got two gripes about this product I'll go into them straight away the first one is that you cannot move the gimbal um, it's not adjustable and it's a little bit high up for where it is. I would like to be able to move that a bit to uh, be able to get your upside down shots, your close to the ground shots. But honestly, for the price, I can't complain. Second thing is <clears throat> just a tiny little thing. There's no quick release to quickly release your camera. Uh, but for me, that's okay because I'm going to be using this on this most of the time throughout the day. It's not heavy, the product itself is not heavy. It's my camera that is most of the weight and that does make it overall quite heavy. Um, I've been practicing with this for about a day and that said, it's really comfortable to hold. Um, it's just that after a while, um, it does become a bit heavy. But it's no problem to put in the other hand and I actually prefer it in this hand where I can um, direct with the other hand, much more finely, much more controlled than I could with my weak hand. Just a couple of points about mine, I've not properly balanced it, although it is, it's workable, it's good and it would do if I like, absolutely had to uh, use it like this, but it's not properly balanced completely. Um, I need a little bit more weight on the top of my camera. I'm not gonna go into showing you how to uh, balance it. I think there's a lot of videos, a lot of tutorials already um, that show you how to do that and when I've got a light panel to sit on top of here the weight will be correct and this drop test will take two and a half seconds whereas now it's taking about one one and a bit but it's still stabilized you know it's still good I can still work with this um, like I said the only problem with it with this is this coming up hitting hitting uh, you know you have to be careful about where your hand placement is going but once you get used to that you know day day or two practice you know you're going to be very comfortable with it so for the price i really can't understand why people would pay more for a product like this unless you just really want to have that gimbal moved and a quick release because that's the only problems that i can find with this product it's well built it's light the grip is good and yeah, this uh, this gimbal bit is smooth as anything, smooth as butter. Um, okay, so your question is now, well, what does the footage look like? So, I was just gonna show you on the phone screen. I'm just gonna show you that I'm pressing record now. And let's go off for a wonder and uh, see how stable the footage is. So, opening my door. And just to note here, I'm not walking how you're supposed to walk with the glide cam. I'm literally just walking quite slowly. Oh, this door's hard to open, so this will be a good test. Big jolt there. I don't know if that was visible. There's my dogs coming to see me. Um, okay, so while I'm being attacked by my dogs, Jilly, don't bite me, please. Um, the other thing you can't do with the steady cam is move up and down. You can, you just have to manipulate the rod, the, uh, the shaft, <laughs> and you can tilt up and down. There's my dog, say hello doggies. Um, and then eventually it's going to come back to stable. Now with practice and practice and practice you can learn to actually stabilise the stabilisation yourself or you can just touch the shaft and uh, re-stabilise it. So quick little bit of live footage of uh, my dog Jilly here. How smooth can we get that? Obviously I said about the focus. You can change focus. I can change in focus manually there. I don't know how well that's going to show up in the footage. Um, I mean, you can do that. It just takes a little bit more practice, I think. So again, change in focus. And moving around. Let's try some steps. So we'll go up the stairs. 
Again, I'm just turning the shaft with my hand back to close the door so the dogs don't run into a bit of footage. Come upstairs and poo like they probably would. So, up steps. Just walking up steps as I would normally there. Not trying to be steady or anything like that. Into my mum's room. <laughs> Out the window. I think that's a pretty good pretty good idea of what kind of footage you're going to get out of this. Again, this is just filmed at 30 frames a second, not 60. So if you are filming it for 60 frames a second, um, you're going to get very, very stable footage. This lens has an image stabilisation feature. I honestly don't know if that works within video. Hey guys. Um, but yeah, there's the footage. And I'm back. Okay, overall, would I recommend it? Yes, definitely would recommend it. If you're an amateur filmmaker, you just want to start getting into um, getting these really cinematic or B-roll shots, um, I'd highly recommend getting this to practice with. And then one day, if you want a more expensive version, you're uh, going to be experienced in it. So yeah, definitely recommend it. I'll put the link in the description. Hope you have a good day, guys, and bye-bye.